Hello, this is Nectarios from Celestial Textures, and today we're going to make some uh, bleeps using uh, sample and hold, and specifically the Turing machine, which is a random looper. The oscillator of choice is the radical frequencies DPVCO, and it's controlled by the Turing machine. The right side of the Turing machine is sending CV to the right side of the DPVCO oscillator beta. The amount of CV is controlled by this knob right there. And the left side of the Turing machine is doing the same on the left side of the DPVCO. This small scale knob controls the amount of output CV from the Turing machine that gets sent to oscillator alpha. So very straightforward, two CV outputs, each controlling uh, the two oscillators on the DPVCO. The sine wave output of oscillator beta is going into the Make Noise LPG LXD. And it's going into the top of Brilla Multifilter to high pass it. Output of the top of Brilla Multifilter is going into Clouds and ZDSP. The voltage block is uh, sending some CV to Clouds and ZDSP. So we get some bit of random modulation. And the 4MS peg is uh, sending some LFO waveforms just to um, have some movement and some interesting stuff happening later that you're going to hear later. And I'm using Euclidean circles to send uh, triggers to the radical frequencies envelope, which controls the make noise LPG. And uh, this basically controls the amplitude, and this is how we uh, control the amplitude of the sound. Just a straightforward uh, single trigger. Longer release time. Oscillator Alpha is in LFO territory, is uh, running really, really slow. The internal wave shape of FM is uh, ramp up. So you hear this rising tone that falls down abruptly. So I'm gonna increase the frequency of Oscillator Alpha, which is modulating Oscillator Beta. And going into audio rate, you get these clangy bell tones. Decreasing the exponential FM amount. Oscillator alpha is modulating internally oscillator beta. And the amount of uh, exponential FM is controlled on the panel by the exp FM knob. I'm going to increase the fill amount in... Um, the Euclidean sequencer in Euclidean circles. So this is the scale output that controls the pitch of uh, oscillator beta in that volt per octave uh, input. I'm going to lock the Turing machine so it's going to repeat the same set of values. And these sets of values can be programmed using these faders here on the right side of the Turing machine. And as you can hear, it's just looping through the same steps. And this is the CV output. Increasing it sends a stronger CV to the pitch input of oscillator beta. And I just increased the fill amount, so I get a trigger at every clock count. More exponential FM. So far, we've been only sending pitch CV to oscillator beta. We're not sending any pitch CV to oscillator alpha. Only the right side of Turing machine is sending pitch CV to oscillator beta. So whilst oscillator alpha is frequency modulating oscillator beta, I'm going to not send any more pitch CV to oscillator beta, but I'm going to send pitch CV to oscillator alpha instead. And here the effect that uh, sending pitch CV to oscillator alpha has whilst oscillator alpha is frequency modulating oscillator beta, which is not receiving any pitch CV at the moment. I'm gonna also modulate the release time of the envelope with the left side of the Turing machine, which is the same side that sends pitch CV to oscillator alpha. So now let's see what the effect is of uh, taking down the exponential FM amount of oscillator beta. So... There's not going to be any frequency modulation happening from oscillator alpha to oscillator beta. Just taking down the FM amount. 
Although this CV sent to oscillator alpha from the Turing machine, we get a steady tone. There's, uh, if I increase the exponential FM amount, whilst oscillator alpha only receives pitch CV, we can hear the sequence uh, running. No pitch CV sent on oscillator beta, remember? There's only pitch CV sent to oscillator alpha. So let's increase the FM amount, and let's increase the stream of triggers from Euclidean circles to the envelope that controls the output of oscillator beta. Let's add a hat. From uh, Dreadbox Drips. The kick is from Future Retro Transient Plus. It's just a sample in the factory content. The baseline is uh, micro braids through the Borg Filter 2. Everything is running uh, in real time, just because. So let's have a wiggle. I have some CV sent from uh, voltage block and it's going through the Optimix. It controls the amount of CV sent to clouds and ZSP. So the Turing machine is now looping. What happens if I take the loop off? So now the Turing machine keeps generating random values. It doesn't loop random values anymore. It just generates new ones, like a normal sampler hold circuit would. Let's start playing with the FM amount and the respective frequencies of the two oscillators. Let's get some effects again. Just playing with the high pass filter a bit. Closing the effects. Let's take the sync off. Playing with the exponential FM amount of both oscillators, so they're cross modulating each other. Cross modulating means that VCO alpha is frequency modulating VCO beta, but at the same time, VCO beta is frequency modulating VCO alpha. So you get like uh, the crazy cross mod FM sounds. It's just mad. And remember, you don't need to go mad with the exponential FM. Like, it's just a bit of it can work very well. On uh, it, it all depends on what CV is being sent to which oscillator and how much. But uh, it's it's always easy to just go full blast and uh, and get really strong uh, high mid high frequency content. But uh, it's worth uh, playing with a, a bit, just a just a hint of uh, uh, exponential FM from oscillator alpha. So at this point, both oscillators are receiving CV from uh, each side of the Turing machine. Each side of the Turing machine controls each side of the DPVCO. So with sync off, we get like some sort of more detuned FM. If I turn sync on, well, it's detuned again, but you get something that uh, resembles more a single waveform instead of uh, two oscillators drifting and uh, frequency modulating each other. Some more effects back. Let's get some more reverb in. I'm just letting the patch play and I'm just uh, tweaking um, a FEM amount and uh, the respective oscillator frequencies just so you can get an idea of um, the kind of sounds that are available by simply just turning a few knobs, really. Let's uh, lock Turing machine again. Another thing that's uh, special about Turing machine is that it has streams of sequences going from left to right. So at this point, there's only one stream going from left to right. You can uh, add a second stream, which has this effect. Right. Now we're going into techno territory. <laughs> But it's, it's a very playable module. It's very easy to just get some groove going on. Let's get 
it's very easy to get lost in it as well. Sync on sounds more like a singular waveform, like I said before. And if I take sync off, it sounds more like two distinct uh, oscillators drifting. So let's play with the amount of CV that the Turing machine is sending to both oscillators. And A new, a new sequence appears. Well, the, the sequence is the same, it's just the sound drastically changes. So, you know, if you think about it, this is really simple. It's very simple. We're just sending two different uh, streams of CV to both sides of the oscillator and playing with the frequency modulation amounts of both oscillators so we can let them cross-modulate each other. And that's the point where you, you, know, you play your loop back on the computer and you just remember to record, just make recordings, make takes, um, and then just go through them later. There's usually a lot of junk that you might throw away, but there's a lot of times there's gold. So many times when you you, know, you you don't have some special plan about what to do and you just want to just jam with the gear and let it do its thing. Um, using a lot I like to use a lot of uh, Euclidean circles uh, when playing live and in the studio. It is a very quick and easy way of determining uh, the length of the step sequence, the amount of fills that are going to be um, in that sequence, and, uh, where the, and the offset of the sequence, where the trigger number one is going to be. So just play with the outputs of the Turing machine into the dual precision VCO. Uh, very basic stuff. And uh, like I said before, this is a, a patch that I turn to when uh, I don't have like a special plan and I just want to jam the gear and I want to hear, I'm looking for a sound that I'm going to hear that's going to inspire me and give me an idea of a vibe that I want to follow in the track. And uh, this is actually a, a good patch when you get started and uh, you want to explore the ranges of uh, the oscillator that you're using, uh, how it responds to uh, frequency modulation, both exponential and linear, how it sounds when it's synced and it's being frequency modulated at the same time. And, and just playing with your module and discover its sweet spots, you know, when you, every time you get a new module, it's always good to play with it and discover its sweet spots. So, basic modulator carrier patch. Now the modulator is in LFO range. Some oscillator modules have switches for that. The dual precision VCO just goes really low when you turn the frequency knob uh, full counterclockwise. So this was the Turing machine video. This is one of them patches that it doesn't really require a lot of technical patching. It's just uh, a matter of uh, controlling the amount of random CV. And then it's just down to spending time and uh, learning the sweet spots of your module. So don't forget to practice and uh, see you at the next one. Cheers. <laughs>